Hey everyone, it's Bash, and this is my 800th video. Yeah, this is my 800th video, not the last one. I know it says 801 on the page, but that's actually a bug on YouTube for some reason. What I want to do with this video is basically take a look at the past of John Satir and how he came to be and everything, because he just kind of came out of nowhere, as far as most of you guys are concerned. Um, I just started making videos based off of him, and it just kind of took off into a basically a, almost like a sequel to Renamon, but more refined and a little overall better quality, because it hasn't really suffered from the end of Renamon, where I was basically just trying to churn out episodes because I wanted to. Now I take a lot more time to develop them. But anyway, the history of John Satir is a little strange, and um, basically how it all started is I found the video at one point or another, the infamous Here's an Old One. I don't know exactly when it was. I want to say maybe 2008 or so, and I found it, and I was just like, oh my god, that's disgusting, why would anybody want to watch that? And that's just kind of how it went from there. I, I maybe showed a couple of my friends, and they, were, they thought it was equally disgusting, and that's just kind of how that went. And then I saw uh, another old one, which sadly isn't up anymore, and to this day the search continues for it, but that's the one where he shits himself and then rides on the exercise bike. That one's even more gross, but... You know, I saw that one too, and I was like, Jesus Christ, what is this guy's problem? And that's just kind of how it was. I think, I want to say this was like maybe 2007, 2008. It could have been as far back as 2006, because that's when those videos existed. But, uh, no guarantees on that. So let's fast forward to 2009. I ended up introducing John Satir in the Renamon series as, like, one of those one-shot villains. And this is back when I was still kind of disgusted by him, so that's why I portrayed him in a negative light. I mean, the uh, the infamous image of him, which now continues on in every single video I ever make with him, is, believe it or not, actually based off of the appearance of one of my other friends, who I won't name for the sake of uh, uh, privacy. Anyway, um, he was a villain. He got killed off pretty quickly. It was pretty standard stuff for Renamon. That was almost like the formula, and that continues on to the John Satir to this day. But John Satir became, I guess, relevant again sometime in 2010 when I was talking to him about, uh, I was talking to my GoldenEye source friends about him, and they were kind of curious, They, because I kept going, mm, you know, the sound he makes after he craps, and they were just kind of curious as to who that was, so I was like, oh, it's this guy named John Satir, and from there, he kind of came back into the spotlight again, so to speak, he was uh, a relevant topic, they started to learn more about him, and they were equally kind of disgusted as I was, but then we kind of saw the humor in the whole thing, and we were like, wow, this is actually pretty funny, and I mean, this guy's got balls to be doing this, and I wonder who he is. And then, I just decided to make a video based off of John Satir and his antics during the day, and that brings us to a day in the life of John Satir. This was the first John Satir video I ever made, and, um... It was very primitive for its time. I decided I want to go. I decided I want to go the route of showing John Satir in a more normal light, not as a villain, but just as a guy that was around and had an everyday life and had friends and was just your average guy instead of some disgusting pervert. Although John Satir's early characterization did take elements from the original appearance of him in Renamon, and that he was kind of perverted and he was implied to be gay and didn't like women, kind of you know the standard Barney Bunch stuff. But I decided I just kind of wanted to um, make him into a more normal guy. And as the series progressed, he ended up turning into almost like a superhero that defeats villains on a regular basis. And that was just something I I figured maybe he could just be kind of like Renamon. And that's how that came to be. I like this part right here. <laughs> yeah, he's implied to actually be going in the toilet there. He's not just shitting himself because that's the that's the main event, as you guys know. So Sean Zietz, <laughs> the concept behind Sean Zietz is a funny one. There was a comment on the John Satir video. Uh, here's an old one that just said "fuck you, Sean Elliot," and one might think that maybe that's John Satir's real name, which to this day we don't actually know if it's John Satir or not. But anyway, it was it said "fuck you, Sean Elliot," and we were like, "what the hell?" So I decided to implement that name into John Satir's life as like a store and believe it or not John Satir himself said that he liked Sean's Eats like the concept of it because you know he's actually seen these videos I don't know if you guys know but um he did uh when I commented on here's an old one I said hey what um I said you should do voices for John Satir and he said nope you're doing fine and I like Sean's Eats and I was just like whoa it was fucking amazing
Okay, so here's the part where he finally busts out the Lucra. <laughs> um, you might be wondering, why does he have red Lucra instead of, like, teal? And it's because in here's er, another old one, the exercise bike, he had red spandex and not teal. I like this, the loud. It's great. And then this is uh, Take Your Time, Do It Right by the SOS band. Uh, this song was kind of a, another relevant song at the time because we were joking about it from another YouTube poop, and I decided to implement it in here because I just thought it, I just thought him popping to it would be the greatest thing ever. And that's just how this episode went. He see he calls uh, Sheila a whore, and they're implied to be married, which is just something I kind of made up on the spot because Sheila is kind of a fun character to just brutalize for no reason. And that's how that went. See, he even says, bag that was swell. That's still part of his Barney Bunch characterization, which I eventually shed later on and made him into a, basically an everyman who just likes to crap himself. Fun time. That's what I used to call it when he went into the room and just did stupid stuff. I just noticed I misspelled mildly right there. Can't believe that. Now we got some thrash metal in the background and John popping to it again. See, you can see we, uh... <laughs> I was trying to force him to put up the fucking exercise bike video because we thought, oh man, that would be such a great video if he would finally put that up. And to date he still hasn't put it up. He claims, John Satir himself claims that he lost the tape, so we may never see it again, unfortunately. But there's always hope that there might be a mirror on the internet somewhere or something. And it's just kind of funny how this all panned out. There's John Satir and he's just popping and <laughs> this is... It's just kind of crazy how this took off onto a series. And there's Kirby, of course, the end Kirby that always ends ended my videos back at that time. So now let's go ahead and let's move on to the next video. So this is um, the second part of this video. In this one, he actually does have the teal spandex, and it's actually the only episode that he's had it in ever. And this is the infamous too much bra Japanese guy. Figured I'd just throw that in there because it was still somewhat relevant. There's Lucy. I don't think I need to introduce Lucy whatsoever. She was just... She's just kind of another go-to character for abuse and neglect for some reason. But anyway... There he is. And in this episode, um... Believe it or not, this episode actually has something that I never really expanded upon. It's the fact that... This the, this episode in the first take place in his old Irvine home. Because we found out that he may potentially live in Irvine. So this is still his Irvine home, and <laughs> just just to digress, I fucking love what I did with this uh, fucking popping like <laughs> beat. Someone said that it sounds like a fucking gabber kick, and I'm like, what the fuck? It's crazy. I was much more creative with these early on, but anyway, yeah. In this episode, he's implied to move away from his Irvine home to Kansas City, and that's where all future episodes take place. If you notice on uh, John versus the Trucks, that's where he drives away from is Kansas City, and that's that's his new home. There is a plot hole though, in that Sean Zietz is a Kansas City favorite, yet he goes to it in the first episode. I guess that was a mistake on my part. Sorry, but anyway, yeah, he moves away, and I put a cameo for a friend in here, and uh, that was kind of fun. Here we go. Several months later, so John's already moved out, and there's Patch 93, formerly Som Sonic the Jackrabbit. He's Lols 84 on YouTube now, and he just did some funny videos, and we were good friends at the time, and I'd say we still are, though we don't talk to each other as much. But but anyway, yeah, he. I just decided to include him in a video. This is supposed to be him reacting to John Satir's shit fest. I, at first I thought this was really his voice, but it turns out it's not. I eventually heard his voice later down the line. It's different than this, but I still use this anyway because I thought it was really funny. And then... <laughs> oh, he pops. And then fucking Seeb. I just had to throw Seeb in here because fuck Seeb. He's such a gay man. So... That's pretty much it. I guess we can do the final video, which was the Satirware video, so let's jump into that one. So this is, um, Satirware. Because, uh, after John Satir made his debut, a few of my GoldenEye source friends, like, looked up Spandex, and they, they just called it Satirware, and I thought, oh my god, Satirware, that's such a funny name. So I decided to make a video out of it. And, um... 
This episode actually has probably the closest to John Satir's original carnation in, uh, incarnation rather in Renamon, in that he he calls women close-minded and that they don't deserve to have Satir wear. Fortunately, after this, I finally completely shed that away, and now John Satir is just a regular old guy. Nothing, <laughs> you know, nothing against gay people or stuff like that. I just I didn't really like his Barney Bunch characterization that much, so I just strayed away from it. This is kind of gross. He's talking about rubbing shit all over himself. And believe it or not, this was before uh, John Satir 2 AVI was up, and that was, like, really disgusting at the time. So this is where he talks about where he doesn't like women for whatever reason. I just did away with that because I kind of wanted to disconnect him from the Barney Bunch because he wasn't really officially ever in the Barney Bunch, and I just, I just used the Barney Bunch because they were kind of recurring villains, so to speak, in Renamon. So I threw in some testimonials of people. Um, this is fucking Dan Martin, CC Saint. You remember CC Saint? I did an interview with him. I've done plenty of videos on him, but I decided I would throw him in here just for fun. I drew the fucking Lucra on him, and that was just a fun thing. I don't know if he ever said anything about it, but uh, yeah, that's how that went. And then here's John Taylor from Duran Duran. See, I was just getting into Duran Duran at this time. I really, I really liked the Rio album, and I figured that I would make John Taylor like a avid supporter of Lucra. And then I made him all good at bass. Coming up is like one of the crazy fucking bass licks I made him do. And here he's talking about an unreleased Duran Duran album, which actually came from a prank. I uploaded a Duran Duran song, quote unquote song, on YouTube. It was actually a decapitator song, and I said it was a lost Duran Duran song, and <laughs> nobody liked it. I mean, it pissed everyone off, so I just got rid of that shit. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. It was just kind of a stupid thing. Check it out. But anyway, here's that crazy bass line. This was taken from the uh, Massacre song. Um, I think Devour Death off of their unreleased first album, which eventually did get released. The, the Second Coming. And then, of course, he pops. And here's Sieb again. I just have to include Sieb in everything because he's just great. He's got the whole spandex suit and everything. And you know what? I think... Well, I don't know. I wanted to say John Satir is wearing a full spandex suit and here's an old one. Or at least, like, a unitard, but without sleeves or something. But I don't know for sure. So now he, here's Fisk. This was the beginning of the Better Days characters trying to avenge each one of their family members' deaths by popping up. Uh, that This is kind of a running gag that went on for a while, and I just kept going, because I, I don't know, I just wanted to include Better Days characters and shit. They're fun to mess with. They really deserve it, because they kind of suck. So he really fucks him up. And now he goes to fucking Saria song. I, I included this in case one of my friends might have got it. I, I made him pop to all sorts of music, and then I kind of made my own unique pop beats. And lately the popping aspect has kind of been toned down a little bit, but I kind of want to bring it back, because that is John Satir's character at, a, at, at the core, is just a regular old guy that has kind of a strange fetish, but you know nobody really judges him too hardly for it. This is before Star even came in. And then this is just... I just threw this in for fun, I don't know why. There's Jay Naylor, <laughs> fucking Rambo, and... <laughs> oh my god. Good times with that shit. Well, anyway, there's my 800th video. I hope you kind of enjoyed going back and looking at some of the history of John Satir and why he rose to prominence like he did. That's 800 videos. I know it's a lot, but <laughs> I've just had a lot of stuff to do. I've been slacking a little bit, but I, I promise I'll try and keep up with John Satir videos and stuff more, and uh, eventually I'll get back to LPs in the summer. I want to take a break from them now, since I kind of did kind of a lot of Let's Plays from October up through February, and then all the way into April, because that Musashi LP took so long, but hopefully you guys have uh, enjoyed what I've been doing for the past few years, because I know some of you guys have been watching for quite some time, and then some of you are more recent than others, and that's okay. Just as long as you like the videos and you like what I'm doing, because I've got a pretty small fan base here, but I'd rather have it that way so I can really be personal with you guys rather than you just being like a uh, faceless mass of people. So thanks. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the future. Be tight.